Namaste my fellow strikers, Holy Materia here, back with another Shinobi Striker video. Today we're going to be talking about how to play healer, so let's get right into it. Okay, so this is an updated version for my beginner's guide on how to play healer. Uh, this time we'll be updating things. Uh, so yeah, so there's been some meta changes since then. Uh, lots of new DLC has come out. Uh, but most of what I said in there still holds true. But whatever is different in this one, we'll, you'll, you'll just take this one as the, as the updated version. So when you're playing healer in combat and you're the only healer on your team, uh, the biggest thing is that you need to heal your teammates. Like I know this sounds obvious, uh, like I said in the last video, but I've come into so many matches where there's one healer on our team and that healer has absolutely no way to heal us. They're just running a full combat healer build and they have no way to heal their teammates. Uh, so the, the biggest thing is that you need to be able to heal your teammates and not just be able to heal, not just have like a single healing uh, jutsu, but you should have multiple ways to heal your teammates. So like at least one healing jutsu and like the healing seal, maybe even an ult that can heal also, but we'll talk more about the builds later. Uh, but yeah, your biggest priority is healing. Uh, don't worry about how many kills you have. Don't worry about how much damage you're doing. Your first priority is to keep your teammates healed and then you can go and uh, try to like help with the fighting after after you make sure your teammates are all okay. So one of your biggest priorities is to keep yourself alive. So as a healer, it's important to heal your teammates, but you can't do that if you're dead yourself. And once the healer dies, it becomes incredibly easy to kill all their other teammates. So making sure you stay alive is your number one priority so that you can help your teammates stay alive. And it might sound selfish, but sometimes that means that you have to sacrifice a teammate. Uh, so to go along with that, uh, don't follow strays and uh, make sure you stay with the group. So sometimes you might see a teammate like off in the distance uh, getting jumped and you see their HP going down and you're like, oh, I'm the healer. I got to go heal them. Uh, but you don't want to go to get yourself into that situation and leave the rest of your teammates and try to go save that one person who, who went rogue. And so because by the time you get there, they're probably either going to be dead or you won't be able to out heal the damage they're taking, especially if they're getting jumped. So then what will happen is that they get killed and then you're there by yourself and then you get jumped and you get killed and then your other two teammates are going to end up dying too because they don't have a healer and and now it's like a 4v2 so so sometimes you have to see like what your priorities are don't just go after one person because really your teammates should be coming to you to get healed uh you shouldn't be chasing your teammates around like they should be the group up emote that's their best friend uh just just spam group up if your teammates are are getting too far away from you it's, uh, instead of instead of trying to chase them down uh, let them come to you so to go along with that use the healing seal because that's one of the things that will help you to stay alive the most it's probably to me it's the best ninja tool in the whole game not just for healers but for any of the classes it's the most op thing there is because it's basically like having a second healing ninjutsu uh, it has good range it, it does a decent amount of healing and it comes back faster than most of the healing ninjutsu and you can also use it faster than things like cellular extraction uh, because you can get killed while you're trying to use cellular extraction because it takes so long to activate after you hit the button but the healing seal comes out like as soon as you press it so you can use that to keep yourself alive and to get more distance uh, once you once you get yourself a little bit of heals uh, so so yeah definitely use the healing seal and then know how to move so that's a big thing that's probably the, the the first thing that's the first thing i tell every shinobi striker player no matter what class they're playing when people ask me for advice uh know how to move advanced movement is the thing that separates new players from advanced players uh, but it's especially important for healers because if you're playing healer you're going to be getting jumped and targeted all the time so just just prepare for that uh just mentally prepare to get jumped because that's just going to happen and you just gotta you know just be okay with it and, and and just roll with those punches but if you know how to move then getting jump won't be as big a deal because they won't be able to catch you and you'll be able to out heal the, the little bit of damage that you're taking while you're moving uh, using those advanced movement techniques and and uh, on top of that so like once your opponents see that you're really good at moving they won't be as likely to target you anymore because it's really it's very difficult to kill a healer that has a good movement and who has at least a few ways to heal themselves and their teammates once you know how to move you won't become a, as much of a target and to go along with that you want to always be on the move like don't stay still ever as a healer always be moving and try to stay above the fight like that means like 
running on walls or on top of buildings or on the side of buildings or like going around pillars and trees and things like that like kind of like out of sight out of mind so that nobody really notices where you are or even like they might be looking for you but they're like where's that healer like there i see his teammates getting healed but i can't find that healer so like just try to stay above the above the match so that yeah so that nobody can really target you or or really notice you okay so now let's talk a little bit about builds so we already talked about like this isn't a build video i'm not going to just give you like a single build and be like this is the best healer build there's there's no like best builds there's builds that can work for you and builds that don't work for you uh, so I want to help you construct a build that will work good for you. So first we talked about the healing seal. I personally think that's the best ninja tool in the game. You can use, if you're still having a hard time like keeping people off you, you can use like kunai or you can use the seal like to keep people off you. And that one's actually alright too, but if you're like trying to be a healer healer, I suggest using the, the healing seal. Or you can use the one that does healing over time, but I think that the healing seal is better though. Pretty much in combat, cellular extraction is a must. If you if you're not running cellular extraction, then you're kind of like putting your team at a disadvantage because it's the best healing jutsu in the game. There's it's been out since the game came out and it's still meta and it, there's nothing there's no healing move that's that's outdoing cellular extraction. So that's like kind of like a locked in spot uh, for the ninjutsu. But the second ninjutsu is up to you and your playstyle. Uh, so like before, I used to like to run triple heals. So I would have a my healing seal, cellular extraction, and another healing jutsu like palm sage. Uh, you can do that. It's a it's an okay build if you if you really want to be like a pure healer. But you can also run like a, another support move. So something like uh, super light and boulder. And in my last video, super light and boulder was not very good at the time. But now it's been buffed and it's one of the best moves in the game. It provides so much support for your team. Not only does it buff everybody's action speed, so like their their speed, their their jumping, their attack tracking, attack tracking distance. Uh, it makes it so it buffs your team to to be better at fighting. But it also gives them alt charge, uh, and it's crucial. Like it, your alt will charge so fast when you're using this move consistently. And make sure you pop it at the very beginning of the match too, like while you're still in your spawn, because by the time, because that will that even though the effects will be gone by the time the fight starts, all your teammates will still get that alt charge. So you want to be using that move like as soon as you can get it to the most teammates, uh, use it like over and over. Uh, don't don't hold on to it unless you get the spam scroll the blue the scroll that turns you light blue don't use a super light and boulder because it'll erase the effects of the spam scroll uh, so that's the only time you really want to hold on to it uh, but you can also use a more offensive move like air palm has always been good weighted boulder or even the super weighted boulder where you can do it in an area effect if you want to be if you want to be like more of a hybrid healer uh, you can you can use something like that and then another good one especially if you're running solo and <laughs> you're getting jumped all the time is the true seeker orbs uh, because that will keep people off of you and it also is like not only does it does it work to get people off of you like when you use it but it, it also changes your opponent's mentality because they're now the all of a sudden the healer is not somebody that i can just go beat up uh <laughs> the the the, the healer is not somebody that you can just beat up on anymore once the, somebody sees that you have the true seeker orbs uh, because that move is crucial to get hit by and it it is it's got such good uh defense and there's still not that many moves that can counter it and most of the time in combat people aren't running those moves that counter it anyway so uh, so yeah, that's a super good move, especially if you're solo queuing, uh, just to get pe just to keep people away from you and to change like their mentality when it comes to how they think about the healer on the other team. Uh, but yeah, so the second jutsu is definitely up to you and your playstyle. But I would I would suggest running at least cellular extraction and probably the healing seal. And then as for alts, that's uh, that's also like up to you. So healers have a lot of good alts now, especially since that last video. Tsunade's alt is still meta, the long distance healing with the slugs, because it gives so much alt charge to you and your teammates. And, uh, and it, and it uh, heals over time, which is good, but it's mostly about getting that alt charge. Uh, because if you just wanted something to heal yourself and your teammates, then Mitotic Regeneration heals you completely now. And they it just got buffed so that the it takes less alt charge to get it so you can get it even faster than you could before and it revives teammates but that's not really helpful in combat uh, but probably the best alt is naruto last battles the massive rasen shuriken it has so much utility it's a one shot it has crazy tracking it's huge it covers so much space uh, so it's basically like a guaranteed hit to at least kill one person and not only that but it revives your teammates it heals your teammates over time it gives them back their ninjutsu it just does so many things in one 
that it's just almost inarguably the best move in the game. But if you're on a, on a coordinated team, Tsunade's ult is probably better because the ults are so important. But if you're running solo, then I'd suggest Massive Rusting Shuriken because it also gets people off of you. Like you can't get hit while you're doing it. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a really good ult. So super OP. They still haven't debuffed it. I'm surprised because it's it needs to it needs to be nerfed really to be honest. Even though I'm a healer, a healer is one of my main classes. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, that move is still super good. Uh, sleep is still super meta. Feather Illusion, especially on Pitfall maps. If you're running solo, I'd suggest using that on Pitfall maps. But if you're in a coordinated team, you can use that on any map. Uh, as long as you guys are coordinating your ultimates. And if you're like a new player and you're playing on a non-Pitfall map, Maze Alt can be decent. Um, like all you gotta do is get people like about half health and then pop that on them and, they, and hit them a few times and they won't be able to get away from it. But because of some of the new alts that have come out, that move's not as good as it was when I made the last video. That used to be my main, uh, one of my main uh, healer alts, but yeah, there's other stuff that's better now. Okay, so the weapon is up to your preference and what type of healer you're playing as. Uh, so I personally prefer the Sakura Naginata, but that's definitely not the best weapon for fighting. So if you're playing as like a hybrid healer where you want to heal your teammates and also be able to do damage and like get people in combos and stuff, just the regular healer weapon is probably the best one for fighting. And that also includes like the Nine Tails sword, Itachi sword, Tobirama, all the ones that have like the same stats as the regular sword. But the Sakura Naginata is better for like movement. Yeah, it's better for just like getting around the map with. Uh, so I prefer that over the regular healing sword or any of those uh, other ones that are similar to it. Now let's talk a little bit about the clothing perks. So I pretty much run the same clothing perks on my healer no matter what my build is on combat. So I use first blood so that my ultimate charges faster and then armed and dangerous so that my ninja tool charges faster and in a bind so that if I get if my health drops below a certain point then my ninjutsu will charge extremely fast. Uh, so if you notice all of my all of my things are about time. Uh, because making your cooldowns lower is crucial for healers because because you're getting jumped all the time you need like all your stuff as fast as you can get it and especially if you're running the healing seal then armed and dangerous is is best uh, for the bottom so that you can get that back uh, even faster than it already comes back because that's going to be your best friend uh, but if you're running a different ninja tool then i would suggest using clear mind so that you get your healing ninjutsu back faster and running first blood with the super light and boulder jutsu makes me get my ultimate at least three times a match even when i have like the slow charging ult like massive rusting shuriken but when i have an ult that charges quickly normally like solid fog i get that at least four times a match with the combination of first blood and super light and boulder jutsu uh, some people like to run master of medicine so that they get more heals with the, every time they heal but the thing is that that only heals yourself not your teammates but some people argue that because you are getting so much more heals your your ultimate ends up charging faster anyway and plus you're getting more heals so there's no real point for the ultimate charge one but i don't get enough healing for myself to for that to affect my ult so much so because it doesn't help my teammates i don't really use that one and you can also use the accessory that gives you health back every time you get a kill if you're more of like a hybrid healer where you're actually trying to get kills. But just remember that you only get that health back when you get the finishing blow, not just like because the KO comes up on your screen. Uh, so I don't really use that too much when I'm playing healer, unless I'm in the pit. Uh, so yeah, that's about it for uh, how to play healer in combat. So yeah, let's just, uh, just to sum it up, make sure you're healing your teammates. You have at least a few ways to heal your team. Uh, stay alive. Keeping yourself alive is the number one priority. Uh, don't follow your your rogue teammates who go off too far by themselves. If they die, they die. That's on them because they didn't stick with the healer. Use the healing seal. That's going to be on every one of these. <laughs> every one of these I'm going to say to use the healing seal for, for base, flag, all of it. Uh, know how to move. Master that advanced movement. Uh, you can watch my advanced movement video or check out somebody else's. There's lots of people that have advanced movement guides. Um, on Shinobi Striker and uh, yeah keep moving never stay still stay up stay above the fight uh, make sure you're like in areas where people aren't really able to see you very well and yeah the builds up to you but I'd suggest cellular extraction at least and then uh, yeah there's lots of different alts you can use that are uh, viable in combat matches for healers okay so number one and this probably goes for each class uh, base is a very objective base game mode so the first thing to do is focus on the objective uh, so that means capturing and holding bases uh, 
because of the DLC, healers have become the second best class when it comes to controlling and capturing points. So because of moves like Water Pillar and True Seeker Orbs, healers are now very good at controlling space. So you want to be focused on not only capturing but also holding bases. So healers should be rotating and we'll talk about this for each class but when it comes to ro rotating the bases, healers should be rotating based on what teammates need help. Uh, instead of instead of uh, just thinking about which bases to capture. If none of your teammates really need help, then make sure to hold the base that you're on, especially if you see any other opponents there. Uh, so second, healing your teammates. So because base battle is more objective based, uh, healing teammates isn't the main priority, uh, but you should always have some kind of way to heal your teammates uh, in, in every game mode if you're a healer, uh, to be honest. But um, it's good to have at least one global healing move for, for healers, like whether it's like Eno's Heal, the Mind Transmission, Palm Sage Jutsu, or like an ultimate like Mitotic Regeneration, or Master Rasting Shuriken, or uh, the Slug, Long Distance Healing, something like that, um, or War Arc Sakura's ult, the 100 healings. So it's good to have some kind of way to heal your teammates globally so that you can heal your teammates because everybody's going to be spread out all over the map. Some good builds to use in base battle would be, first of all, Water Pillar is the, is the best move that healers have uh, for base. Uh, even though there's lots of counters to it now, it's still one of the best moves and it's still one of the biggest nuisances. Uh, you just have to be more strategic how you use it now, like wait for people to waste their Water Pillar breakers and then, and then pop it, or you can wait until you have like the base partially captured and then put the Water Pillar on there so that by the time they break it, you'll already have captured it, or maybe you just have to uh, block and ref and deflect somebody off of you and then you'll and then you'll capture the base like that in the last video I was talking about how the sl uh, summoning slug is a really bad jutsu but it's been buffed and it's one of the best healer jutsu now especially on base battle uh, so you can run that uh, put that on the base and it, it you can completely destroy your opponents because they're, they're going to be trying to get on the base and they, so they have to run into that slug and get that debuff to their defense and it'll be so easy for your teammates to kill them because of that and all your teammates have a way to heal themselves and remove status ailments. So that's a really good move on base and you can also use that to leave on a base and then rotate to another base to go help another teammate. And uh, also, also use the healing seal, that's, the, that's still the best thing for healers even on base battle. Uh, especially on base and flag, I would say it's the best thing to use because sometimes you don't want to use all healing jutsu. Uh, so yeah, the healing seal is really good. True Seeker orbs are really good for crowd control, uh, but just note that you can't capture a base or hold a base while you are inside the ball. Like you can use it to knock people away from the base, but you won't be capturing the base because you're floating above it. And also, if you if a opponent is on the base and you're inside the true secret orbs they'll they'll continue to capture the base even if you're like hovering above the, the base so just be careful with that and when you when you shoot it it's good to either hit the healer or the defense type with the orbs so that you can reset their ninjutsu because they have the best jutsu when it comes to capturing bases or even or, or holding bases uh, like i said before mind transmission palm state jutsu is good because it's a global healing it'll get your your alt back really fast you can pair that with water pillar so that you'll be safe while you do it uh, my main build right now for for base is water pillar summoning slug and and massive rusting shuriken but we'll talk about the alts in a second but cellular extraction is always good it's, a, it's good on every game mode including base uh, and base battle is one of the the few times that it might be okay to run like a combat healing build uh, but you should still have at least one way to heal your team, like maybe the the healing seal. Uh, but because a lot of the healer one-shot sort of builds, they require people to be like stationary or like on the ground. And base battle is the, is the best time to be able to catch people with things like shadow stitching or shadow possession jutsu. And the, all the ground pound moves are good because they break water pillar and sand shield, like crimson drizzle, uh, heavenly foot of pain, and Sakura's ground pound. And this is one of the few times where green rain ground hold can be okay yeah so there's a lot of uh there there are a lot of jutsu that are viable in base battle uh, that aren't that good in combat or other game modes uh, so as for ults mitotic regeneration is good because this is the time when reviving people is the most important and to go with that base battle is probably the only time that naruto last battle's rebirth move is good his ninjutsu uh, because it, it's important to be able to revive people on base battles uh, so yeah, so that makes Mitotic Regeneration really good because it heals your teammates completely, globally, and it will revive everybody on the whole map. Uh, Maze Alt is really good. 
and it actually made uh, lava style is also a decent uh, ninja too too but her ult is really good for clearing bases and even uh, killing people who try to stay on, on the base if they want to if they want to try to fight you while it's going on 100 healings can be good because it's a global heal and that ground pound you can get a lot of people in it because people will be stationary like on the bases uh, but I but the best ult is probably uh, massive raw sang shuriken because because everybody's always grouped up on the bases you can get so many people with that and it's a global heal it gives everybody your ninjutsu back and it revives everybody so it's kind of like my tactic it's kind of like two or three alts in one uh, basically so yeah that's still the that's the best alt in base just like it is in combat Okay, so as for the weapon, it's pretty much up to you. I think the Sakura Naginata is the best in base personally because it's good for getting around the map and you need to be like uh, going to different bases and stuff. So because the air combo is so good at moving yourself forward, I like to use the Sakura Naginata. Now, the only problem with it is that in base battle, it's really crucial to be able to break your opponent's guard because people are gonna be guarding a lot on bases. But with the Sakura Naginata, the heavy attack is like a two hit combo and only the second hit breaks guard so sometimes people will be on the base and they'll be able to knock you away before you can break their guard so the normal healer weapon uh, like we talked about in combat is is much better for breaking guards because it's just a single strike even though it's slow uh, it can't be deflected so the normal healer weapon and anyone that has the same stats like the tobirama uh, weapon the itachi the nine tails all those uh, they're all okay for base also Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the clothing perks. So for base, I pretty much run the same clothing perks as I do in combat. I always use first blood so that I get my ultimate faster because it's really crucial to get your ult a lot in base battle. Because healers, because of the ults that we'll use, they clear bases, so it's really important because it's almost like a guaranteed cap every time you get your ult. And I still use Armed and Dangerous because I always use the Healing Seal, so that's still good. Uh, but in base battle, instead of using Unbending Will, I use I use Battle Harden so that I get health back every time I get a KO. Uh, some people like to use the bottoms that give you more health. So it's a good uh, bottom to use for every class really in base battle because it helps you to outlast your opponents on the bases. But for me, having the Healing Seal and Armed and Dangerous is enough to keep my HP up. So you can kind of play around with the with the different clothing perks, but those are the ones that I that work that work well for me. And I think they work, uh, yeah, they work pretty well in base battle with the, especially with the builds we've been talking about. So yeah, to sum it up, uh, focus on the objective, uh, heal your teammates, try to have at least one global healing, uh, rotate to the teammates that need healing, and don't forget to hold bases. And probably the most important jutsu are water pillar and true seeker orbs. So uh, in flag battle, healers will be playing a supportive role most of the time. So sometimes you'll be supporting your teammates who are defending the flag uh, by healing them up. And then sometimes you'll be going with your teammates to capture the other team's flag and uh, support them while they're capturing the flag. So usually the healer won't be the flag runner, but they'll be playing a supportive role and like going back and forth between the two flags to help their teammates, whoever, whoever needs the most help at the time. A few tips if you are running the flag, uh, high ground is key. Uh, so remember that if you use a move like nervous system rupture or chakra scalpel and when you use the move you run off of the edge of the wall you'll gain a lot of altitude and it can help you get to the high ground which is crucial on flag battle because uh, it makes it much harder for your opponents to to hit you and knock the flag out if you have the high ground on them and uh, something that's key in all game modes but especially in flag is to master that advanced movement because unless you have the spam scroll you're not going to have your jutsu all the time so half the time when you're running the flag you're going to be relying on those advanced movement techniques and remember to block and try to be aware of where your opponents are like sometimes it's even a good idea to turn the camera around and uh, like be able to see your opponent and you just have to like kind of know where you are like as far as where the map is and uh, so you can know like when to block uh, your opponents and like when a jutsu is coming your way and stuff like that you can use advanced movement and blocking to either evade or to block incoming attacks so water pillar is vital in flag just like it is in base battle because you can use that to defend your flag or you can use it to put on the enemy flags to help your teammates uh, to capture the flag uh, so that's probably the best move four healers uh, so you guys you want to run that if you have it and uh, some kind of uh, healing jutsu or supportive jutsu with it in the healing seal so some builds that work well uh, you, so you don't have to run water pillar so but some of the other jutsu that are good in flag 
are like if you're defending you can run like super weighted boulder the one that has the area of effect or even just a uh, weighted boulder jutsu but the super weighted boulder is really good for uh, slowing people down who have the flag uh, because it decreases their whole action speed and it, that's really crucial now so yeah that's been buffed since they changed like the uh, movement speed to action speed overall action speed uh, you can use something like air palm to seal people and to knock flags out of people as like a range move or uh, chakra scalpel or nervous system rupture to help defend the flag and even you can use that to uh, to run flags if you want to run the flag oh also if you're defending the flag you can you can run water pillar with enos heal the mind transmission palm sage jutsu uh, so that you can heal your teammates that are defending and heal your teammates who are uh, going to capture the flag that's a really common uh, build that you see for healers uh, right now it's it's pretty meta uh, even like clans run that another good ninjutsu in flag battle is the summoning slug and you can use this for defending or for trying to help your teammates cap the flag. So either way, uh, just put it on the flag, like whether it's your flag or the opponent's flag, and uh, your opponents will have to run into it, and then they'll get that defense debuff, and that's crucial to help your teammates kill the opponents and get those ticks on the flag. So yeah, that's a really good move. Uh, whether yeah, whether you're defending or uh, helping supporting your team. But if you're running that, I'd, I'd suggest not trying to run the flag with that. But that would be more like you're just supporting your teammates. So as far as like some flag running builds, uh, you can use Water Pillar also to capture the flag and then uh, like Nervous System Rupture is probably the best. That's probably the best build for running flags. That's my personal build uh, for flag battles when I'm playing healer and the healing seal. Uh, but you can use Chakra Scalpel and also like Chakra Scalpel and Nervous System Rupture together. So it's like kind of like the lightning build. Uh, you can use the uh, war arc sakura's move that gives you super armor that's pretty good uh, but in, but besides just running the flag if you're supporting your teammates who are running the flag you can run something like super light boulder jutsu so that you can give that speed that action speed boost to your teammates flag battle is another time where combat healer builds are okay because uh, getting kills is important because you get those ticks on your opponent's flag and, and a lot of those one shot type of builds require your opponent to be on the ground like uh, using uh, shadow stitching and shadow possession and stuff like that and your opponents are often on the ground in flag battle so uh, so yeah those moves can be good even uh, shikamaru's ult is good in flag battle uh, as for ults people like to use insect jamming technique like the the bugs because it disorients your teammates uh, you can use solid fog because it clears areas master rossing shuriken is also a good ult because people are grouped up at the either flag and you can uh, throw that at them and, and take the flag and it uh, gives all your teammates their ninjutsu back, which is crucial uh, in flag battle, especially if you're, one of your teammates is actively running the flag, or even if you're running the flag. And uh, Eno's ult is also crucial on flag battle because it's, a, it's really good for support or when you're running the flag because it, it, it's, it's, a, it's especially good for support because you can just use that to keep everybody incapacitated for a minute, or you can pitfall people with it. Uh, and also you can use sleep if you're uh, supporting your team, uh, Feather Illusion. As far as weapons go, if you're defending the flag, if you're playing a more defensive role, I'd suggest using the regular sword for healers and any of the other ones that are similar to it, like the Tobirama blade or uh, Tachi and Ninetales, all that, because uh, it's easy to break guards with that move and you're going to be, there's going to be people blocking on your flag all the time, so you want to be able to, to break their guards easily. But if you're, if you're planning on running the flag or even like uh, going with your teammates to help them get the flag, then I'd suggest the Sakura Naginata because that one is much better for movement and uh, that's crucial when you're you know trying to go back and forth between the flags or if you're running the flag or if you're trying to keep up with your teammate who's running the flag. Uh, so you'll have much better movement options if you have the Sakura Naginata. As for the clothing, the only one that really matters is the bottom. Uh, make sure you, you use in a flash which is one that boosts your movement speed whether you're defending running the flag or supporting your team it's it's crucial to be fast in flag battle uh, so when you have that on when you when you're holding the flag you pretty much move at the same speed as your normal movement so that's crucial and also if you need to like chase somebody down or if you want to keep up with your your faster like attack and range type teammates who are running the flag it's good to have the only other bottom i would suggest is clear mind to help you get your ninjutsu back faster that one also works well for the top i'd suggest first blood uh, because it gets you your ult faster and uh, your, you can use your ults to clear flags whether you're defending or trying to help cap or cap the flag yourself 
And for the accessory, I usually use Battle Harden uh, to get health back every time I get a KO. That's just the accessory I use in general, except for when I'm healing in combat, pretty much. Uh, so yeah, so Flag Battle, out of the main game modes like combat, flag, and base, uh, Flag Battle is probably the the game mode where the healer is the least important, uh, but they can still they can still uh, give your team an advantage. Like especially if the other team doesn't have a healer and you have a healer, it'll just give you an advantage because your teammates will be staying alive longer than than the opponents. Uh, but yeah, so just to sum up, the healer should be playing like a supportive role most of the time. So that means whether you're supporting your teammates who are defending or supporting your teammates who are capturing the flag, uh, you can go back and forth and help help out both sides. Remember that high ground is key and that you can use moves like nervous system rupture vertically. Don't forget to master that advanced movement and remember to block while you're running the flag. Uh, water pillar is crucial in this game mode so if you have it don't be afraid to run it and you can use alts that will disorient your opponents or like area of effect alts all right so yeah thanks for watching guys i appreciate all the support i'll see you guys in the next one everybody stay safe out there peace and love